So let's start discussing about what is a template and uh, why is it required for writing competitive programming code. See, generally when we're drawing any print, first we have to write as hashtag include statements and uh, it will also have in my work. These are the most basic things that, would, that will be there in every other program that you write, right? So instead of writing it every single time, I will declare it as a template. I will name that template as CP template. Let it could be it could be anything, but I named it as CP template. So whenever after I write in the CP template in Sublime, I am using Sublime text. You can use it in VS Code or any other ID. After clicking enter, so see, I can see there are like default include statements. These are for vectors and also for long long end using name plus standard. Just a small corporate world solution. And these are basic inline things that are like that gives us maximum of two numbers, minimum of two numbers, whether a given number is even or odd or even negative. And this is for instead of writing for loop each time, I just give a loop of n, but you can still use it for. There's one thing that I wanted to discuss in this template is we have two VSL. These are the two functions. One is solution and the second one is a repetitive solution. And I'm calling both of them from it. Let's see what it happens. What it happens is if there are no test cases, that is, there is only a single test case, then I will use the simple solution function. Here I will write my actual code. Whatever I write, here it would do my actual code. But whenever there are a number of test cases involved, what I can do is I'll simply comment this for now and I'll uncomment this so that in this it will take the test case also into consideration. And then while the test case are not equal to zero, it will run the solution. In this way, we can cover both of the cases which has no test cases and also which has test cases. That way it is just a single template. So in this, I'll teach you how to design your own template. You need to go to the developer. You have to go to the new snippet. So let me copy this one. And here in the green thing that you can see, you need to copy your code and just uncomment this tap trigger because we need to give it a trigger like enter or tap so that the code will actually get plugged in. So I'll uncomment it and let me name it as uh, temporary trigger. So now with since untitled, I've got to save it. I will save it as temp, something like temp. So now let me remove this. See, I can see that I am trying to input the code from the temporary trigger, which was written in temp file. So temporary trigger. That's how you do it. Now, I think it's okay if you design your own uh, template as well also, but I prefer this one. Yeah. Now in the next class, let's see about how to solve by using this template. So in this question, we are asked to actually find the number of common divisors. So let me explain the question. Here we are asked number of common divisors. That is, if I'm giving the numbers when two numbers are given, not for a single number, but when two numbers are given. See, how do you find the number of common divisors? Firstly, by taking the one approach is our classical approach. Let's say a smart approach in the next one. Generally, most of the people start with this approach only. Let's see what that means. So what the question is, is if you are giving the numbers 2 comma 4, what are the common divisors that I can generate? That is 1, uh, 2. Yeah, that's it. So it's only 1 and 2. Uh, for example, if you are taking 2 comma 8 or even better, let me take 4 comma 8. And that would be 1, 2, 4. So here I have to generate the output as 2. Here I have to generate the output as 3. So how can one do this? One can solve this. Firstly, what I'll do is I'll find the minimum of 2 comma 4, which is 2. I'll give a for loop from, I can't uh, give 0, from 1 to the minimum of 2 comma 4, then 2 and C if i divides 2 and 4 similarly here what will i say i in the sense i will be 1 comma 2 here i would be 
1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 and I'll check 4 divided by i is equal to equal to 0 similarly 8 divided by i is equal to equal to 0 this will be satisfied for 1 2 and also 4 right so this is one approach so let's start coding for this so sim firstly he'll give you a two numbers if there are test cases I've found this question in hacker rank so let me copy this in this there are test cases so since here there are test cases I have to use the repeated solution not the simple solution but let's write here what is it doing firstly we need two numbers so and the numbers could be let's just let's see the constraint the constraint is given us ln m could be up to 10 power 8 10 power 8 so what did I do I just get long long bit we can do this or also we can use ll because ll is given on the top ll m comma n scan those after scanning those for end i is equal to 1 i can't give 0 because something divided by 0 is not defined i less than min x that is just the n line function that has given for minimum so min x of m comma n for every iteration incremented by 1 if okay so in order to maintain a count i have to give a ll count is equal to 0 if m divided by i is equal to equal to 0 and also n divided by i is equal to equal to 0 then simply increment 1 then finally you have to print count so let's see if this is running properly only it is saying 20100 why uh, 10 and 4 is having how many divisors it will have 1 and 2 that's fine but 1 and 100 there is at least one divisor right so where did we make the error is here because uh, in this if you're having 1 comma 10 1 should also be included so let me run this again so i'm getting the output as 2 1 and 10 let's see here we can see the output as 2 1 and 10 so we can say that our approach is right but is it optimal let's see in the next class so this was our code but is it optimal no it's not optimal because what happens is whenever i give a larger number when i'll head gamble consider this case 280 or 240 this for loop will iterate up to minimum of x that is 288 comma 240 min x of 288 comma 240 is 240 that is this for loop has to iterate 240 times which is considerably bad what if i has an other number like 0 2 5 4 something and um, something so it has to iterate this many times yes. that will take considerably a large amount of time so what can i do is let's look at the another approach another approach that is if i take the number 288 and 240 what if i calculate the gcd of 288 comma 240 you will get it as 48 gcd is greatest common divisor which is 48 and what if i count the factors of 48 that would be better right because i am only calculating the factors of 48 I am only taking consideration for the factors of 48 only 48 rather than 240 and also this is the same case for even for large numbers as well because the large numbers the for loop has to iterate with the minimum of both the one but if we calculate GCD and find the factors of this that time will be drastically reduced to only this much 48 and I'm, I'm not checking for 240 but rather I'm checking for 48 so how to implement this one 
It consists of two steps. Firstly, I have to find the GCD of 280 and 240. After finding, let me store it in the result. And the, okay. the first step is to find the GCD of two numbers. And the second step is to list out or count the factors of uh, the result or the GCD of the phone because if I take 288 and 240 there will be many factors like 1, 2, 4 uh, and so on here also it will have 1, 2, 4 and so on and here somewhere will be 48 and here also somewhere will be 48 if I am able to guess the 48 and just list out these That would be enough, right? Because both 288 is being divided by 48 and also 240 is being divided by 48. So if I were able to list out and count the number of factors for 48, that would be enough. So we can one thing we can do is modify our for loop. But the thing is, even this is not that efficient because I'm still going up to the minimum of this thing. After even after finding GCD. So let me take the help of firstly this is the GCD function. I'll make a separate video for GCD as well. This function will return the greatest common divisor of two, both the numbers. And then this function will give us the common divisors. So after having the count, let me remove the for loop. Let's see what happens. The GCD is populated in this function. In the common divisors, what is the idea? The idea that we're thinking is to find the GCD of the numbers and then to list out the factors. So here we found the GCD to be as n, GCD of a comma b is n, and then storing the number of common factors in the result. And then after in the for loop, I'm iterating from 1 to square root of n. The thing is up which is absurd that even if, if you iterate till the n, even if you iterate till the n or even the square root of n, it's the same. The result was not changing, but one thing to remember is here, what is it doing? This n by i is equal to equal to i. That is, if you are having like 4 by 2, which is equal to 2 again, right? So the factor would be 2, but not 2 comma 2. We, will, we shouldn't add the number of factors twice. Instead, we should only add the number of factors. Only two has to be added only once, but not twice. But if, if this is not the case, that is n by i, 4 by 2 is not equal to i again, then we have to add twice. Because like, uh, if I say 6 by 3 is equal to 2, right? Then we have to add both 3 and also Hence, the result is being appended twice. That's it. So after finding the result, now what should I do? I have to just give count is equal to common devices. I have to give the numbers m, comma n. Let's see if this is running. I'm still getting the same result, two comma one comma ten. This is optimal. This is optimal because I'm not checking for either 288 or 240 but I'm rather checking for the GCD of 288 comma 240 which is 48 and even in the 48 I'm not iterating it up to 48 but I'm iterating it only up to square root of n that is square root of 48 is around around 7 or it has to be can be 6 that's it by this step I'm actually populating I'm just taking the consideration of both the cases that is 4 by 2 is equal to 2 and also 6 by 3 is equal to 2 case and then after adding to the result, I'm returning the result and here I'm calling it result. I'll make a separate video for this seed and common devices again. You can refer that. So I can conclude by saying that this is a better solution for the same thing. So now we are asked to actually calculate We are asked to calculate GCD of two numbers A and B. 
First off, there are actually two approaches. First one is a classical approach. And classical approach is not always the optimized approach. It could also be an optimist. But let's see what is the classical approach is. So in the classical approach, what you will do is, let me write the actual code itself. While A not equal to B. That is, while the two numbers are not equal, simply, if A greater than B, simply convert or simply update the value of A by taking A equal to A minus B. If B greater than A, update B with the same way. B is equal to B minus A. And finally, return A. That's it. So keeping this approach in mind, let me draw a small table. That is A, B. And here I'll keep the iteration number. In the zeroth iteration, that is the initial value. Let's take an example. A is equal to 10. B is equal to 10. What is the GCD? We know 2. Because 2 is the greatest common divisor of the two numbers. So here it will be 10 and B will be 12. In the first iteration, here A is, is A greater than B or B greater than A? Here it is B greater than A. So B will be updated as B equal to B minus A. So this would be 10 and this would be 10. Now in the second iteration, 10 is greater than 2. So 10 would be 10 equal to 10 minus 2, which is 8. Here 8 is also greater than 2, so it will be 6, 2. Here 6 is also greater than 2, here it will be 4 and 2. In the 5th iteration, here 4 is also greater than 2 and 2, 2. Will there be a 6th iteration? It will not be a 6th iteration because here A is equal to equal to B. The while loop is terminated. Yeah, the while loop is terminated. So, yeah, this is how you solve it. Let's take an other example also for a non for having no common divisor. That is, let me take like 5 and 4. A is equal to 5, B is equal to 5. Zero iteration. The first iteration, 5 is greater than 4. So, that would be 1 and 4. Here 4 is greater than 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. The third iteration it would be 1 and 2. And the fourth iteration it would be 1 and 1. There will be no other iteration because A is equal to equal to B. Now if I return A, what is the value? I can say GCD is equal to 1. Here if I return A, what is the value? 2 is the GC. So it's nothing. We can directly write the code here only. I am just taking a normal template. So, let me first make a function uh, void gcd. What is it doing? It, okay. it will return an integer again. So, int a, int b, while a not equal to b, simply if a greater than b. We update the values a equal to a minus b. Else convert b as b minus a. And finally, after this is being done, after the while loop has been done, simply return a. So let me take some input as I want to I want to scan to number. So take in A and B, scan them. So after scanning them, simply I'll directly print the result of A comma B, GCD of A comma B. So let me take two integers. Let me take uh, two and four. So what would the GCD be? It has to be two. See, the GCD is two, and uh, Instead of doing this way, you can also take test cases. Let's take the test cases on them. So, int t while sin t while t not equal to 0. In 
the test cases i'll take let me take like five test cases and then five test cases in the first one let me take 1 comma 6 and then 7 comma 14 which is gives the gcd as 7 and after that um, 5 comma 30 22 comma 11 6 comma 5 let's see the let me run this okay so that comes in. The output is 1, 7, 5, 11, and 1. Yeah, the output is red. So, this is a classical approach. So, so far we have seen the normal approach or the classical approach. There is also an other approach which was proposed by Euclid. So, it's called Euclidean's approach. Euclidean's approach. What Euclid said that he proposed that GCD of a comma b is equal to GCD of b percentile a comma a. Simply, in our program also there will be a single step which increases. Let's see why they are equal first of all. Firstly, let me take the same examples uh, or a slightly different one b equal to 10 and also let me take a bigger example for this such as 42 and 7 I guess, no, okay, 44 and 7. Here A is less than B, here A is greater than B. We should see. So, how will you find B percentage? It's equivalent to doing B by A and remainder red. So, let me do that. It will be easy to visualize. So, what I am doing, I am dividing B with A. So, I am dividing 12 with 10 which is giving me 2 right so 2 is the remainder that is equivalent to after finding the remainder I am after finding the remainder I am still dividing the remainder remainder is now becoming the divisor and the previous divisor is becoming the dividend I will do this step until I find the remainder to be 0 0 so now the divisor that we are having in our hand is the GCD. That's what Euclidean said. Similarly, let's do this for, for this one also. First step is to find B percentile A. Let me do that. I am dividing B with A. So, I am dividing 44. I am dividing 7 by 44. So, it becomes 0, uh, 0, now 7. The, what did I say? Now, this is equivalent to the remainder is not 0. So, the remainder will further divide the divisor 44. So, 7 6 of 42, 2. Now, what will 2 divide? 2 is also not equal to 0. So, 2 will divide 7. 3 is of 6. I am having 1. Still, I am not getting the remainder to be 0. So, now the 1 divides 2. Exactly. So, 1 2 is of 2. 0. Now I am getting the remainder, remainder to be 0. So what is the divisor that I am having in my hand? It is 1. So 1 is the GCD now. So I can conclude by saying that GCD of 10, 12 is 2 and GCD of 44, 7 is equal to 1 because we can see the GCD is here. Now simply let's apply here apply the same formula. This is a formula, simple formula. Where I that? In our code. So, this was the previous code. Now, let's implement that. Firstly, let me make a new function. Now, this one, remember that this is a recursive function. So, I just keep it a little bit better. And it will take the two inputs just like the previous one. And A and NP. So, since it is a recursive function we have two parts first one is the base case and second one is the recursive case so firstly let's write that so what is the base case when should the terminal be there? what is base case it generally means terminating condition so when should it terminate when the a becomes 0, that is, 
here it has becoming a a is now becoming b percentile a but b percentile is is a new a and after that it is a again now this one is a and lastly zero would also be a so whenever a becomes zero the program has to terminate so if a is equal to equal to zero so what is terminating in the sense it has to return the divisor the divisor would be b right so justly return b else what should it return it has to return what is the recursive call now now this is the recursive recursive call what should it return it has to return gcd of b percentile a comma a because a is now becoming b percentile a and the new dividend is becoming the previous divisor b percentile so let me even change it here now let me change the inputs to something to two test cases i am taking 10 and 12 and i am taking 44 comma 7 now let's run this and see so i'm getting 2 and 1 let me take an also other case of uh, 3 and this is this 3 and now what will i give i'll give something like 1234 and then see 6 or something let's see so 6 is a divisible so 1 to 2 here is being divisible by 6 that's so that's a uh, two ways that you can actually solve the gcd you can refer the code i'll keep it now based on this we will also solve the uh, number of devices also i'll see in the next class so the question we have here is to find the factors of a number is to find all the factors of the number not just prime but also composite so How would we generally find the factors of a number? Let's take the number twenty-four. How will we do it? One approach is to divide from one to twenty-four and five. What this remainder as zero? How will we do that? We'll take a for loop from. One to the given number twenty-four, and then check if I take the variable and for loop as i, and then check twenty-four by i is giving zero. If it's giving s, then divisible. So, but thing is, this one is, this is very time and also space consuming. The reason is simple, because having numbers from one, two, three, and what's the middle number? It's twelve, and then twenty-four. We can see that the numbers from thirty to twenty-three, the numbers from thirty to twenty-three are not divisible. Are as like they do not divide twenty-four, because twenty-four by something like fourteen or something is will never be. Seen. And we move for sure, sure the one as well as twenty four, one and twenty four are divisible. That thing we know. So it is okay to say that we have to just check from any number from two to n by two. We have to just check from two to n by two. Just like we are taking from for loop from i is equal to two to i is equal to n by two. And what will be right in the for loop? Just checking that twenty-four uh, by i is giving equal to zero. Okay. So this is our final approach that we. So 
let's write that in code. So, okay, so let me create my template. This AP template. Okay. So, let me first give the inputs. Let's take three test cases and I want 14, 12, and 98 or something. I just want to restore the. So, so what is it taking? Firstly, it's taking in n and then taking the input for n. And what is it saying? It is passing to another function. Find factors of n. It's a void function, so it will just print. You can also take a vector or something and then return it back. I'm just preferring for now find factors. It's taking five factors, it's taking n, n. So, what is the approach that we are taking? Firstly, for n, i is equal to 2. I'm starting from i, and i goes to 0 to n by 2, it's equal to n by 2. And I will say it starts from 2 and goes to n by 2. If n percent i, that is the remainder, is given 0, then it is. So I'll simply print the i and instead of doing this, I'll just give a final space and after this, I'll just give it. So we may selecting, okay, I'm just selecting the solution. So let me take the repeated solution and now let's see what happens. So I can see that 14 is having the factors as 2. So now, ah, okay. And also, one thing I missed is I'm only checking for 2 to 14. But also, I know that 1 is a factor. So I'll print 1. And also, the number itself is the factor. Uh, and the number itself is a factor. Now let me run it again. So let me run it again. So I can say that 1 is a factor, 14 is a factor, and including 2, 1, 4. And for 12, I am having 12 is being divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and also 12, and for 19. So this is our first approach. So let me take it as first approach. But most of the computer programmers use an other approach, second approach which will use the square root function. It'll use the square root function. So let me name it as void find factors but better. So it's in still take the number. And also instead of having a void, you can either take a vector as return or else an integer for representing count. Both you can either take a integer. So if you take count, you simply after when it's usable increment the count. If you take a vector, you just give a pushback. So instead of find factors, that I want the better approach. So firstly, let's discuss what the square root approach is. What square root approach does is let me ask. What square root approach does is firstly it will it is estimated that that for example if you are taking root 67 or something what is the integer value of this I'll give you a actually it is 8.23 uh, something is there. But if I can type test it to n, the value would be a. So, what it will do is, it will check from 1 to 8. That is 1 to square root of n. It will take from 1 to square root of n. But what will it check? If I take the variable to be i, if i 
divides yeah sorry divides n that is if n by i is equal to equal to 0 then divisible but this is not directly divisible but instead it should check an intermediate condition also which is if i n by i is equal to equal to 0 that is yes it will direct to two other conditions that is if n by i is equal to equal to i what does this mean it means that i square is equal to n that is if i take the number 64 can be written as 8 into 8 right now we should not append two eights instead only one eight has to be appended so we will increment result plus one if i am given something like n by i okay instead of having this i can simply write as else condition else condition then what is this mean um like 42 is equal to 6 into 7. so if i'm having 6 then i have to open both 6 and also 7. so how can i do that i'll just say the result plus 2. this is just for the result in the sense they denote count but i have told you earlier also you can take a vector as well but here let's try doing a vector let's see so this is the basic algorithm that we are going to use now so instead of taking the word i'll take it it will return a vector of n so how will we do it? firstly let me declare a vector of n b so what did i say for and i is equal to okay here one thing to remember is we are we it here whenever i goes from one so if i have taken the 64 64 by 1 is equal to 64 right so both 1 and 64 both are appended to the appended to vector so you need not explicitly write 1 and 64 separately so what will i do i start from 1 and this will go up to square root of n the given number and i plus plus if n percentile i is equal to equal to 0 that is what is it saying i divides n what are the two cases two cases let me write a simple statement like 8 into n or 7 into 6 that is it could be a square or it could be not a square so if it is a square then i have to simply append one like so what i'll do the base case as okay simply what uh, d dot push back i will append i but if n divided by i is not equal to i itself that is it's not then i'll also append e dot push back n by i because n by i is also a factor okay and finally i have to return b so let me take a help of print vector also is the square root function uh, and return b so here i have to declare vector of n b b is this one and then finally print vector b so let me see okay as we can see that we are still getting the same result but let me just update the numbers taking 24 uh, 50 and uh, maybe 9 oh and also since we are using the vector i can also sort the vector here itself that is sort of v dot begin comma v dot n it's just a simple approach 
So now the result will also be sorted. That is, if the 24 we are having these all vectors and 50, 1, 2, 5, 10, 50, 10, 30, 1, 2, as we can see. And also, we can also print the vector A itself. And also, we can say that we can print the B dot, the B dot size. So for everything, there are eight vectors for 24, six vectors for 50, and three vectors for 9. This is the second approach.